All right, we want to check in with Chief Meteorologist Craig Setzer now. So, uh, so many of us feeling so lucky, especially mm -hmm. as I just mentioned, right. seeing the devastation that it wreaked on, on the Bahamas right. there. And, and, you know, I mean, and two things with this that I'm just thinking about because we've literally said Broward, at least the Northeast, have put up your shutters and then it's not that bad. And when there's a, just a tropical storm or a hurricane that doesn't quite strengthen that much, and then you're like, well, why did I put up my shutters? Yeah. But the risk had it come here was so much greater that we had to kind of make that extra effort just to protect ourselves. And it really was That's at our right doorstep. Do. It was right it there. It was right at our doorstep. And, and I was thinking today, how did we get here and where did we go along yeah. the way? So I put together some graphics here. Hopefully, this will help explain it. So this was over a week ago, Saturday at 11 a.m., and there was a tight little tropical wave, tropical disturbance down there. It wasn't that big, but it formed, and that was the first advisory, 11 a.m. a week ago, Saturday, Tropical Depression 5 forms. And then just six hours later, it was Tropical Storm Dorian. But remember, we were talking about all of this dry air out here, and I was saying, Literally, this tiny storm is swimming in a sea of dry air, and it continued to the west and continued to the west and continued to the west. We had tropical storm watches and warnings, even hurricane watches for parts of the islands there. And this was on Tuesday at 11 a.m. And at this point, it was still dry. There was dry air down here, a little bit of wind shear. There was dry air over here. And we said, well, it's expected to hit the Dominican Republic. So what's going to happen is our thinking at that point was, and the models were bringing it up here, and boom, it was a small system with likely get torn apart and uh, that would be the end of Dorian. But something interesting happened between Tuesday and Wednesday. It kind of reformed to the north and then headed towards the Virgin Islands. And then as it was heading towards the Virgin Islands, became a hurricane. Now this is Wednesday afternoon. We've got a hurricane now moving through the Virgin Islands and this whole scenario of taking it out with one of the bigger islands or even disrupting it with Puerto Rico, that was off the table. And there wasn't much dry air up here and there wasn't much wind shear up here. So from here on, now we had a hurricane that was moving into prime strengthening conditions and I was definitely going, oh, now we've got a problem because we knew it was going to make a turn some point, but then it became on Friday, where is that turn going to occur? Is it going to turn early? Is it going to turn sharp? Is it going to turn late? What's going to happen? So we tracked it, and then it started getting stronger and rapidly stronger through Category 2 and then into Category 3. And that's when the turn towards Florida began. That was Friday at noon. So it was moving to the north, northwest, and then it turned to the west. By Sunday morning, it was Category 5 bearing down on the Abacos there. Then by Sunday afternoon, it was 185 mile an hour. Category 5 went from 160 to 185. That was the top end of the storm. This was Sunday afternoon now. And then as we go forward here, the steering currents collapse and it's just drifting across Grand Bahama there. That's 5 a.m. Monday and then going on into Tuesday, finally, this is this afternoon, the motion resumes back to the northwest, and that's where we stand as of now. So how close was it to South Florida? Well, remember we kept talking about that 26 line. That's this line right there, 26. There's the hurricane core right here, and the winds on that last point there. That was 2 a.m. on Sunday morning, and the, the, basically the storm never got south of 26 at its six at its farthest west point. That's only 42 miles, 42 miles farther south, and it was right in line with Fort Lauderdale and Miami. How close was it in terms of east-west motion? That was the center point right there, and that was about 120 miles. So if we think about that distance from us to the storm and the track and look at that in the overall scheme of things, that is not that big of a deal right there compared to the whole track. Two big things were important for us. One was this turn to the north. Once it got to the north of 26, we were feeling better, but we knew we weren't out of the woods. And once it started slowing down also um, a Sunday morning, that helped us in South Florida because if you slide this whole track west 120 miles, we would have been going through what the Bahamas were going through. It was that close, 120 mile difference to the track, a very scary thought.